Good afternoon, ladies and chat shows. It's the new chat show. It's 1985 with the Irish are mad at the Brits, the FA are mad at Europe, Birmingham's mad at racists, and miners are mad at everybody. Everybody's mad at everything. See, it's not just the 2020s. Yikes. Hiya guys, welcome to 1985 and your favourite YouTuber is now born and his parents have just taken him to Orton Towers for the first time but mind you, not that he even remotely remembers at the age of 18 months but the seeds were sown early, the clues were always going to be there and here we are adding attractions that are probably still going to be around in 2024 this week's adventure is this, it is the Rapids the first ones of course being added around about now at Orton Towers, Cedar Point, Dorney Park just to name a few, that's not the order in which they were put in um, uh, we need to keep up with the Joneses. We need some ourselves. And of course, we also need to up our theming game because we've really let it slip over the last 10 years or so. Uh, so this is what we've got. We're entering into the theming game again with an adventure-based rapid ride. <laughs> Hooray! I wanted to keep this simple because it is 1985. Remembering these are still the first rapids going in. Of course, they're going to get more sophisticated as the decades go on. But this is one of the first to be installed. So we have the station, uh, which was originally, by the way, a rotating platform station. Uh, uh, but actually, because I wanted it to sit quite nicely in this area, I was a little bit limited with space. So I ended up looking at the Dorney Park one, and that is a traditional normal station. So uh, that's what I've gone for here. And of course, we're going to come round the bend here into the lift hill, and then it's just going to meander its way down the hill uh, into a wide section where I can put some theming and stuff in here. Uh, and then, of course, it's going to run back into the station. So I did have some terrain that I wanted to play with in this area. So I've always wanted to put this here. I did have the highest point originally of the ride here it's too close to this road so actually I thought I'm just going to dig into the uh, dig into the side of the hill and have it as a rock face and stuff so that's kind of where I'm thinking uh, thinking with that now I do have future expansion plans for this area there's going to be future rides that are still are yet to be invented that will be coming into this area to complete it so for now we are just going to do the rapids but actually I didn't need to do much terraforming in this uh, I think the biggest thing was this uh, collection pool that we've got here so of course when the ride is not operating the water needs to go somewhere and that would then come into this pool and then because it's a bit of a flood risk as it's the side of the hill I've actually made it a bit of a running river coming this way it will link up to this pool down here and then of course that links up to the main lake via drains that are underneath the ground I do need to put those in uh, so that's kind of how that's how that's going to go I do need to put water treatment and stuff in this area or maybe this area I don't know which side they're going to go but it's going to need to go in here because of course you need to pump the water from the bottom to the top um, so that's all going to go in here and then of course there's going to be future developments and stuff in this in this area anyway that's going to hide all of this stuff and we need to eventually link the path up around this way so that is pretty much where we're sitting right now um i better get on with this right see you in a minute <laughs>
well this has um expanded hasn't it and i mean i decided to increase the scope of the area and include a load of services and facilities that i had banked up for the expansion of the area that i was going to do in the future but actually i realized that this is not connected to anywhere else and it's missing a load of the supporting stuff that it's needed and it probably would have been put in for day one so we'll talk about those in a moment but guys i do have a quick question for you that i'm going to need your answers in the comments please the uh, middle bit of the episode, you know, the bit after the first montage, actually the bit that we're in right now, in future, do we just cut this out and go straight to finish, straight to the done product? Because some of you are giving me the feedback of the episode when I went to Creamfields that was a lot shorter that actually you preferred those. And I don't know whether to pin it off or not. I'm in two minds. So can you let me know in the comments, please? Thanks. Uh, so here's the uh, here's the area, and I am actually digging how this is going, how this is turning out. Like this is really, really coming together, probably better than I thought it was going to. This nearly was a I'm going to delete it kind of episode. This idea of uh, African village is really starting to take shape, and I mean, yeah, I've stolen quite a bit from Disney to do this, but. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Like, I don't even know where to begin talking to you guys about this. So I'm just going to start here at the rapid station. We're just going with simple pole framed building for this one. It's going to have thatched roof and it's just going to be nice and simple. I don't want this to be anything more elaborate than this because the area needs to bring it together rather than the station building itself. So of course it's had none of its kitting out that's that's needed for the station and stuff. It needs all of push points and all the usual gubbins and I don't really know what I'm going to do with this pad yet. I don't like it. I can't change it. It's in the game so I need to find something some creative way of, of something I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do um but then we're gonna come around this way and we enter into uh, the reservoir so I just put the reservoir in of course these pillars and these poles are there to support the the walls and whatever they wouldn't all be completely straight and level they would be somewhat an angle and whatever because of the way that the weight of the water and stuff is uh, so yeah that's what I've done uh, and then this bit here is of course the top end of the um uh, of the the pumps so this is representing water i can't put the water up here even if i wanted to guys so uh i've just put this fake water in it's the concrete colored blue just to represent water oh, oh, whatever um this is then going to be a service pump building i haven't put that uh, haven't put that in and then all of this way i've done some custom channeling and some not custom channeling and channeling because that's you can get away with it in, in some times and you don't get away with it in others so i've just put a reservoir pool here because that's like a an area that the water would collect and stuff it's going to come around this way and then it's going to come into these fountains or these waterfalls and of course i just put the, uh, the the lagoon pool that sits at the back here it needs all of its kitting out and detailing right it needs pipes and it needs water effects and needs all sorts going on but uh, i just wanted to show you what this is going to look like from the side of the hill and this is because we had to dig into the side of the hill here right so we needed to do something just to block it off so it wasn't just this stark contrast of terrain uh, and whatever and then of course you would have an overflow bit here because you've got lots of water that's falling so this is going to be a flood prone a uh, flood prone area so you've just got a bit of a pool there and then we come around this way and then we enter into the wide bit um and then it comes around to the back here. So this is the volcano. Uh, I actually placed something that I found on the workshop here, uh, just as a size element, just as a like to size up the area. Actually, it worked right there. So I just decided to keep it there. So this isn't my own work. This has come. Uh, this has come from the workshop. And then we come into the final, uh, the final bit, and again, it's all got its custom channeling, uh, and then it's custom catwalks and stuff all along here. Now, the custom channeling is thicker than I would usually do, and that's because this is the early 80s, so modern concrete technology doesn't exist yet. They would actually be a lot thicker channels than you would find nowadays so uh, that's what we've got that's what we've got going here and then in terms of the queue line i've just put the queue line fences up they're just the poles put into like a rapidsy style uh style fencing and then they come into a cattle pen over here i've put this bridge cover on here i'm not sold on the idea of the bridge but I've, it is what it is it's gonna stay uh, it's gonna stay for now and then i've also done it here as well i still not sure i i need to sort of like I need to kit out the rest of the area to know whether this needs to stay or whether it needs to be open air. Um, 
I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but it's there. It's there for now. Um, and then over here, I've just started to um, bring together the idea of the African village, the African market that we've got going on. So I've actually added extra shops along this way. And that's partly because I wanted to start to hide some of the maintenance mechanisms and whatever from people, uh, from guest view. So you don't actually get it that, uh, that stark contrast there. Um, and then I've just started to like steal from Disney, basically. <laughs> <laughs> not not even sorry but i've started to deal from steal from the animal kingdom um because i love the building styles there so it's perfect for what i wanted in this area so that's that's the the vibe that i'm going for there this one i sort of was a little bit inspired by what i was doing in cadenham castle down by the um uh, the booster bikes and then actually as it turns out animal kingdom has also got a similar building so that's what i've done <laughs> i've just stolen it again but it's going to be like a seating area there's going to be ice cream and, and whatever uh, going on in here but it felt like this needed something to block it off from the rest of the park without actually blocking off the rest of the park taking a few cues from Gardaland and, and how Gardaland achieves that kind of effect. So, uh, I yeah, I like it. I dig it. And then we come over this way and we've got the return of the Chacho Toilets. Uh, there we go. Chacho Toilets are in here. Um, again, they're functional. They work, but there's no detailing and stuff going on in here. So I do need to do that in the next, uh, in the next bit. But I'm just, again, starting to get a vibe for that African building. Um, this is not a carbon copy of the thing uh, in Animal Kingdom, but it's very, very similar. Very similar. Um, and then because I was very heavy on the old buildings, I wanted something that was a, a little bit lighter on the whole building thing. So I actually went for a lean-to here. Now we are in the realms where um, grab-and-go uh, grab machines, grabber machines, ATMs, games units and stuff are actually now a thing in uh, public areas for theme parks so this would be like the first time that the park is probably putting them together without being a manned games unit so that's what we're going for here but it's just under a lean-to uh, i just need to sort of find a way of putting a back to it and putting down some concrete and whatever just to make it make sense um yeah, it is. It is what it is. Uh, and then we've got this. This is this has also appeared. It's a um, it's a gift shop, and I wanted to take the opportunity to use the Adobe set, uh, the Adobe, the Adobe set. Um, I've never ever used it, and I thought actually it just needs it needs something doing to it, right? So that's what we've got here, and I actually quite like how it is. I mean, especially as this whole African village vibe is very terracotta and very yellow. Um, so these just go together really, really well. And then, of course, if you turn them the inside out, then you've actually got plain walls that you can use. Um, I'm going to put a different roof on here. It's not going to be a flat roof. And then, of course, the ceiling of this is going to hide all of this mess inside here anyway. Uh, and then the last thing I did is just started to put all of the pathing down uh, so and then of course the mulch that hides all of the um, path covers that I use so this is going to give you a vibe for how the area is actually going to look and then I've done the same over here as well and then I've also just put in the maintenance road up going here uh, up here now I don't really know how this is going to pan out I don't know what I need to do in terms of curbing and stuff I'm not sold on this I don't know whether I'm going to replace it with actual paths don't know yet. I need to. Uh, I need to play it out and see what happens because I quite like the idea of the paths being a very finite, very tidy, edged thing as opposed to the the terrain paint. Let me um, let me play it out and see and see what happens. Uh, anyway, this is how we are looking from the top. I love how this is coming together. Like this is sparking some imagination, and I love it. See you in a minute.
And there you go, guys. Just like that, the Dunfinell stamp is coming out. And I'm willing to say it's full now because, as we already know, there are some upgrades coming to this area here. Now, the rides that are going to be coming in this area are either only just invented or are being invented right now. So we need to be respectful of the law and the canon of the park. And uh, we're going to need to do the upgrades later. But that does mean there's going to be some area touch-ups that happen when those come in. Of course, you do some, like, modernization stuff, don't you? Just to account for all of the new guests and things that are going to be coming through. But for now, this is what we've got. And guys, I love how this has come together. Like this view, I think is one of my favorite views of the area. This building just turned out so incredible. Like it just sits so amazingly on the sight line. Of course, we know foliage brings everything together. So the foliage has created depth into this area and I am so here for it. And weirdly, this little maintenance area at the top here that I left right until the last minute was the thing that brought the area to life. For some reason, putting this in made it absolutely pop. And I don't know what it is about this crappy little L shaped building building that made it come to life but it did so I'll take it like I'm happy with that so let's have a look at the whole area so remembering that I have stolen quite a lot from Disney we do need to like, remember that we are in 1985 uh, and we are a British park and we are still working on a budget so while Disney is going for all out absolute detail we're just going for plausible realism over here in the UK and I mean Alton Towers is only just starting to do it I actually don't even know if they are doing it yet I mean Black hole is probably a thing by now, but that's about the highest level of theming that we've got. But this uh, this gift shop, I had in all sorts of configurations. I had all sorts of weird and wonderful decorations added to it and, and like, intricate patterns and all sorts. And it wasn't until I stripped it right back that I realized that this is actually as good as it needs to be. So I'll take it like whatever and then inside inside here i've kept it nice and simple i've just put some of the sun sails up here i don't know i don't remember if they're hydro or mangoes i think they're hydro sun sail uh, but they just finish off this roof just absolutely nicely and it's a very cramped gift shop of course it's it's supposed to be that's what gift shops would have been in the 80s and then uh, these little islands were a complete happy accident right i i wanted them to be flower beds but actually it wasn't until i started to overgrow them that i thought actually these work you know and it sort of splits the area off a little bit. It makes it a little bit less stark. So I'm happy with it. I'll take it. And then we've also got the toilets. Toilets are now completely done. Uh, this weirdly looks like a pole that's sticking out from nowhere. But it's not. It's just the underside of the roof. Uh, but yeah, the toilets are all done. Cha-cha toilets. Uh, and just a little bit of kitting out in here. Again, doesn't need to be any more than this. It's just it's just toilets, right? Um, remembering it's 1985 toilets as well. So this is probably even more kitted out than it even remotely needs to be. Uh, and then whilst I'm attached to, uh, attached to scenery, I've decided to keep the bridge cover um, maybe it'll be stripped out in future years maybe it'll get damaged by a storm maybe a fire whatever i don't know uh, but for now it's decided uh, i've decided to keep it and it doesn't like intrude too much on the area right it fits it does what it needs to do um queue line then i have just put some clutter and a few bits of vegetation and whatever around and of course we've got a name rumble canyon rapids love it <laughs> like proper cheesy 80s style like inverted commas logo if if you will <laughs> and then of course i've just put the queue line over here and just uh, touched all this off now what i have done is i've put the fountain splash underneath the terrain to make it look like the water is moving and this gives the area a little, little bit of like dynamic movement Makes it a little bit believable as, as being a body as being a body of water. So particularly when it comes to this area here where you've got lots of movement of the water and it's lots of stuff that's going on. So that's kind of what I wanted uh, what I wanted to do in there. The station itself, I didn't really do too much to it. I was like, actually, do you know what? It kind of works as it is. I just need to finish some fine details and stuff. And actually, it, it's all right like it is. Again, maybe it's going to get touched up in the future. You know, when the um, uh, the expansion comes along, there might be a few like tweaks and whatever but it's it's all fine and then of course you've got the rumble canyon supplies i love this building it's just so simple it doesn't need to be any more than this at the moment it's just so simple and so elegant and it's just it's yeah i'll take it <laughs> happy happy accident this one given that i wasn't going to do anything like this but yeah it's it's all good uh, and then we come across to this seating area this turned out really really nicely uh, i wanted to copy the idea that i've used in most of the other parks that i've done with the bits of the um the temple theming and stuff on the uh, on the roof and whatever just to bring it to life a little bit but actually now that you've got the backdrop of the corkscrew coaster this looks really 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 good uh 
simple inside doesn't need to be any more than that that's the theme of the uh, that's the theme of the series of course but yeah bob's ice cream thought i'd pay a bit of homage to uh, the coaster that was once behind it oh rest in peace bob uh, <laughs> you've got the monstrosity the corkscrew coaster in the background hey mate maybe the corkscrew coaster won't go uh, won't last maybe it'll be gone and something else will replace it i don't know yet i haven't decided i've i've got a master plan but i haven't quite decided what i'm going to do with it uh, then over in the maintenance area this is just, ah, oh, yes, it's simple. It's, I think it's because the building is themed, right? Rather than the concrete buildings I normally use, I think it's because it's themed and it just looks the part. I have put some stuff inside it just to represent the maintenance area. I haven't gone all out in kitting this out. Um, we're starting to get to a point where the game doesn't like the piece count. So let's not waste it, eh? Let's uh, let's use it effectively. And of course, this is the pool. Um, and then this is where the, the channel runs through. And then these runners, uh, they are theme makers talking items. They come from um they come from the workshop so you can get them there are uh, uh, blueprint versions that you can get they are also just as good but these are yeah tmtk runners and they're important because they keep the boats either rotating or actually moving down the channels particularly where you don't have much current going on uh, so yeah they're, they're, they are important and then of course we've just got a little bit of theming and stuff going along in here i didn't want to overdo the theming on this ride because remembering it's still 1985 we're not disney have a look at like thunder canyon and all of the other uh, rapids rides that were put in around this time they're all very much of this same sort of level of, of theme and stuff um some escape platforms of course and then a couple of bits going on in here uh a couple of like effects that go on i wanted this to to like have effects of course you do um, and then the waterfall uh, effect here is stolen from Dorney Park. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> and we come into the waterfall. And yes, this is the drencher. This is supposed to be the drencher. This is the thing that in 2024 would have been turned off because it's a health and safety nightmare. Um, but nowadays, we're good with it. It's it's good to go, right? Uh, and then we're going to come down this way. And you've just got the plane and stuff. And you go underneath the plane. Uh, and then round the, round the corner. And then round the... Um, uh, around the volcano around here see you around some more chacho <laughs> yeah. and then into the final drop and then into the final run up to uh, up to the station where you're just in the water i just added a couple of like bits of theming and a couple of waterfalls and stuff along here just to give it give it a little bit of personality uh, and then back into the station where i've just added some other station bits that you need you know like life rings and things to move boats and and that sort of stuff so yeah this is how it's looking and i'm actually i'm glad that i've managed to make this work with the landscape as well so i've managed to retain the hill but i've also put in retaining walls because it's supporting quite a bit of stuff on the land here right so it's subtle but it is effective the same applies over here as well uh, and then of course all of these are like concrete bedded pools whereas this one is a natural pool down here this is a concrete bedded pool because it's an artificial uh, it's an artificial lake so it works right it absolutely works uh from every angle in fact like it just sits so amazingly you can see through here uh i have added by the way extra trees and stuff to the back here it felt like we needed to expand the forest slightly and the weather well, forest wasn't always complete in the original park i always knew i'd need to bring it round, particularly as we cleared quite a chunk of forest to put this in so it felt like i wanted this to sit as if it's inside the forest that's how it looks then from the uh, outside of the park right it's coming together, especially when you think what's going to be coming in these er in this area uh, in the future. The park is starting to starting to come to life. It's starting to feel like it's a slightly bigger park than than we set out to do. So, guys, as always, thank you for getting to the end of this episode. You know what to do: like and comment, and subscribe, and stay subscribed, and do all sorts of weird and wonderful wacky things about sharing the video. Because the YouTube algorithm does not like me at the moment. I don't really know why, but it is what it is. What it is. Um, let's go for a ride on this. It's not going to be that impressive, but it's it's a rapid ride nonetheless. Uh, guys, I'll see you next week. Have a good one. Speak to you later. Bye. Bye.